All right. Today, I want to share with you guys my personal experience with introspective hypnosis. Um, I took my first course a little over four years ago at this point and did a little more than a dozen sessions after that. Um, and then I took a recent refresher course in March, learned some new techniques and a little more in depth um, in the whole modality. Please go. Thank you. Um, I wanted to speak about the first time I went under hypnosis. Um, I have been under hypnosis three times now, but the first one being the most powerful. Um, of course, the first time being I was completely new to the whole situation, and so was the practitioner. This was her first ex uh, experience practicing uh, and leading, facilitating a session. And uh, I didn't know what to expect, of course. I had listened to many of Alba Wyman's sessions that she has posted on Facebook. Um, if you're curious about what that looks like, look her up. Alba Weinman, W-E-I-N-M-A-N. Pretty sure that's how you spell it. Um, but, so I was familiar in the sense of listening to other people's sessions, but I had never gone under myself. So my first experience was, I had three past lives come up. The first one being some kind of Arab man. I don't know the nationality. I don't know the time period, nothing. All I know <clears throat> was that I helped travelers cross the desert. They would pay me and I had nothing to my name besides the camel and everything I could fit on its back. And I would just help cro people cross the desert from here to there. And that was my life. And I had no lovers, I had no children, I had no family. Um, she took me back to my childhood in that lifetime. And she tried to get me to see my mother and I could only see the back of like the head covering, the headdress, couldn't see a face. And I got the impression that she died when I was young and that there was no mother, that my father raised me. And my father did the bare minimum of keeping a child alive. He fed me, clothed me, and had a roof over my head, but there was no intimacy. There was no love. There was no, not even really eye contact. So I grew up very emotionally detached um, in this lifetime. And so I had nothing. I wanted for nothing. I didn't crave a lover. I didn't crave money. I didn't seek anything outside of what was presented to me in this life. And it was kind of bizarre because it was, it wasn't a sad life. It sounds sad. It sounds barren per se, but it was very peaceful. It's very, um, neutral. It was a very neutral lifetime. And she took me to my death scene in that life. And I died in the stables with my camel. Uh, I just fell over and died. And, uh, probably natural causes. Like there was no, you know, it was no dr dramatic kind of ending. And, um, when she, you know, my soul disconnected from the body and she asked, you know, what was the purpose of that lifetime? And it was just to be okay with nothing. It was literally to be acceptant of the minimum and being okay with it. And literally just, there was no major, um, life drama that I had to experience in that life. So I was pretty beautiful. Um, moving forward, second life I had, and by the way, not everyone actually has past lives come up. I've had a, a couple that didn't have any past lives when they had a session, but from my experience, most people do have past lives come up. It is not a past life modality is literally just to help heal trauma, but the soul is ready to let go of old shit carries not only from this lifetime, but from past lifetimes. And if a past lifetime is interfering with your perception in this life, likely it will come up to be healed and released. So my second past life, I was a little girl, like maybe seven years old. I had fair complexion. I was walking around the woods by myself. And she said, you know, take me to your home. So I walk, walk through the woods and I find this one room cabin. It was just a standalone by itself cabin in the middle of nowhere and this beautiful forest. 
Um, and she had me go inside. And of course, you know, there was a bed, one window, one door, a bed, um, an area for like a, a pot and a fire, like a, like a giant cauldron looking thing, um, to cook with and a table. Like I, I'm pretty sure like that was the extent of what I can recall. And my mother was there. <clears throat> she's, she's trying to get me to see my father. And in this, the feeling I got, because when it comes to hypnosis, it's not like you necessarily know all the details, but you get impressions, you get f like feelings. I had the feeling that he was gone on working and that he possibly like chopped lumber for a living. And so he would go where the work was. So he'd be gone for long stretches of time and then come back with, you know, money. And that, um, so we fast forwarded to the next significant scene and I was like 16 years old or somewhere around that age. And I'm gathering herbs from uh, our garden outside. I take them inside and I can see bundles of herbs drying out on the wall. Um, and we, me and my mother, since it, I'm assuming my father passed because he just no longer was in the picture. Um, me and my mother created tinctures and healing um, herbs, basically, for the surrounding people in our community, which, like I said, we lived off of nowhere. So people would travel to us and, you know, say, hey, you know, my child's dying or this is the issue and, you know, we need healing. And we would create natural remedies. Well, in this day... Uh, we see a horse-drawn carriage type situation coming up the hill and there's fear when I see this and there's men at our door. Uh, we open the door. We are told we are being charged with witchcraft. Um, and they bind us in ropes with our hands behind our backs. And I see us in the back of the carriage um, I can even almost feel the rocking, the shaking of the carriage. And, you know, she asked me, are you crying? Like, how do you feel emotionally right now? And I just, I wanted to be strong for my mom. And I just kind of rode in silence. We both rode in silence and they put us in a jail cell. <clears throat> and they left us there for what felt like a week. It was a long time had passed and they hadn't really fed us. They hadn't cleaned us. They let us look dirty and disheveled and emaciated. And we were brought in front of a, what felt like a court or some kind of church or something where there was people in, ch in like pews and um, we were tried for witchcraft and we were found guilty. And I, she said something about, you know, look into the people's eyes or like, what do you feel? And I was like, they're fear, they're, they, they fear us. Um, and so they took us to the gallows and they put nooses around our necks and she asked me, what do I feel? How am I responding? You know, am I crying? And I said, no, I wouldn't give them the satisfaction of seeing me struggle and that we were proud women and we both were silent and we just, um, I have these ones. <laughs> we just let it happen. We just, they hung us. And, uh, she was asking, you know, she asked if we needed to forgive the people that were watching or the people that sentenced us. And we said, no, because well, we, we, as in me, that I understood that they were just scared and people who don't understand something fear it. And that I don't feel any ill will or any, um, anything against them. And so that was pretty intense. Um, <clears throat> and within the model of introspective hypnosis, you do a body scan. So from this higher perspective, you could look down at the body. Some people are visual. Some people like me, I, I, I'm a feeler. I couldn't really see my body, but I, I scanned my body internally and could feel right. Um, and you can do this for symptoms, you know, if you have certain ailments and stuff like that, or sometimes people have attachments, which, uh, spirit attachments are a thing. If you haven't heard of that, it's very interesting. You're welcome to ask me questions about this. If you feel the need to, if you're curious, um, but in this body scan, I felt something in my throat that was really tight and I was like, <clears throat> there's tightness in my throat. 
And she's like, well, you know, like, let's pull that up. Let's, you know, let's see what that's about. And I was having a hard time talking, like talking through my throat. And she was like, okay, can you get on the outside? Can you get on the outside and look down? And this is something I need to go ahead and let people know. This is a trigger warning for rape. If you can't hear this, you could stop this going forward. But this is very relevant to my lifetime and this life. Um, so, zooming out from a higher perspective, looking down, I was being raped by my husband. In this life, it was during a time, which I don't have an actual time period, but it was during a time period where women relied solely on their husbands for survival. If you didn't have a husband or family to take care of you, you were desolate. You were um, literally homeless and begging. So, in this lifetime, my husband would drink ridiculous amounts and would violently rape me regularly. So this wasn't just a one-off or a few times. This was a regular occurrence in this lifetime. And she tried to tap into the, per to him because within this, it's like a, it's like a still frame of this moment of this impression of energy in that time frame where you can actually access um, different points of view within the memory. But she couldn't get through to him. Nothing came out. But what was happening is I was just, I was not physically sobbing, but my eyes were like just pouring. Like my, I was not controlling the tears. My body was expelling tears. Okay. And, um, she was like, okay, well, why don't you just leave him? Well, I explained to her, there's nothing else for me at this time in space. There's nothing else. I could die on the streets. And, um, she's like, take me to a time where he's not around when you're alone. And I envisioned myself in this form where I am slumped over at a chair, hollowed, feeling nothing, feeling the most void I have ever felt and have never felt since. Um, I felt so empty as a person, used up, no joy. And she fast forwarded to my last breath, my last, you know, experience in that life. And he accidentally strangled me to death, uh, during one of those interactions. And honestly, my soul was ready. My soul wanted to go. Um, so coming back from that. I don't remember, sadly, I did not get the recording of this, but I don't remember the purpose of it or why that one came up, but I know the purpose of it in this life. So some of you who've watched my videos or who know me personally know that I was a gold star lesbian my whole life up until recently when I tried sex with men for the first time and got pregnant. I say men as in plural, there's been one. Um, but it was actually this session that made me realize how much I had to heal from that lifetime and that's why I never felt safe with men. I always felt like they wanted to take something from me. And in a lot of cases it was true. Like even without the past life, like, you know, typically, sadly, a lot of men just kind of want to use you for their own benefits, which not to say it couldn't be the other way around. That's not the point of this. Um, but realizing that I did not trust men innately and if I felt their arousal towards me, I would feel repulsed and like sickened to my stomach. So going back, it made so much sense why I only trusted women and I could, I only wanted to be touched by women. Um, and so after having that realization or that, uh, session, I had a deep realization that I love women and I'll always love women, but this was something I needed to heal in this life and to take my power back rather than feeling fear and traumatized still from a past life that I had no recollection of. And, you know, of course it took years for me to get comfortable with the idea or even find somebody safe enough to do such things with. Um, but that was a very intense session, my first experience ever. And it was very beautiful. And I will let you know that you don't really know 
it's like, it's not cold hard fact. When it's coming up to you to speak, you're like, I don't know where this is coming from, but it's coming up. So I guess I'm going to say it, right? Um, so if anyone were to ever get a hypnosis done with me, just know that you can't overthink it. You got to just literally trust what comes to mind. Um, trust your intuition. Follow. It's like a, I almost think of it as like a, um, a cord of light. You're just kind of continually pulling forward on this cord of light. Like, where is this leading? I don't know. Cause it comes as you go, as you speak, it just keeps flowing. So I did a session for my best friend recently, um, about a month ago. I'm about to do a couple more and I am going to be looking for people for practice and soon to actually take on full on clients. Um, so if that's something you're interested in or you want to look into it, please look up introspective hypnosis. My teacher is Antonio Sangio. He is the one who created the classes. Um, Alba Weinman was my muse who got me into hypnosis to begin with. So all worth looking into if you're intrigued and I'm an open book. So if you have any questions and you want to email Tactically Unashamed or message Tactically Unashamed on Facebook, you're welcome to. Um, those of you who follow me personally are welcome to ask any questions on my personal page. So that's it. And I look forward to sharing more about my hypnosis experience with you guys. Thanks.